Okay then my friends, so we've got to the point now where we have three different screens on our Flutter app and we need a way to navigate between those different screens, right? Now to do that, we're going to have to tackle routing, or routing should I say, because I am British after all, in Flutter. And by the way, you are going to notice me say routing or route rather than route or routing. I'm British and I should say the latter, but because I've seen or rather heard so many Americans talk about routes and routing over the years, it's second nature to me now, I just say routes, so I apologise if that offends you if you are British and you're watching this, it's not my intention. But anyway, let's cover these maps first of all, because we need these maps to understand routing in Flutter apps. So then, maps in Dart are a bit like object literals in JavaScript or dictionaries in Python. They're basically just a set of key and value pairs. So what we're going to do is create a simple map here to see how we set them up and use them. And then we're going to take what we learn and apply them to create some routes inside our Flutter app. So then let's create this map. We do that first of all by saying map. That is the data type. Then we give this variable a name, which I'm going to call student. So we're going to describe a student here with the different properties they might have. And we start a map by using curly braces like this, which looks a lot like we would in JavaScript, right, to create an object literal. So inside, we give this different properties and then values to those properties. So the property is going to be a string. And the first one in this case is going to be a name. Then we have a colon, then the value, which is also going to be a string in this case, Chun Li. OK, so then we can add a second property by adding a comma and then the name of that property, which could be the age and then a colon and the value, which is this time going to be an integer. 25. So now we have this map set up which describes this student. It has two properties and values to those properties as well, a string and an integer. Now if we wanted to, at some point, we could extract one of these values by using square bracket notation. And by that I mean we can do something like this. I'm going to say print and then inside this print statement, I'm going to say I want the student, which is the name of the map itself, the variable. And then using square brackets, I pass in the key that I want the value to. So if I want to grab the name, I just pass in name like so. And it's going to print the name over here. We can see Chun-Li. And if I want the age, I could grab the age. If I run that, we can see now the age, hopefully. OK. So this is pretty much how a routing is going to work. We're going to have some kind of route and then whatever widget we want to load up for that route using a map. So let's put what we've learned here to use and create those routes in our Flutter app. OK then, gang, so now we know a little bit more about maps. Let's try putting that knowledge to good use by creating some routes for this app. Now we can create all of the routes on this material app widget directly. And we do that by creating a dun 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 routes property. And this is going to be a map. So this map, remember, expects key value pairs. Now the keys in this routes map are going to be the actual routes themselves. For example, something like forward slash about or forward slash contact. And if we went to forward slash contact, for example, we'd expect to see a contact widget on the screen, right? So that's how this all works. Now, what I'm going to do is just start with the base route, which is just forward slash. So the first widget I want to show up when we first open the app, this is the base route. Now, the value to these different routes are going to be functions. And these functions take in the context object as an argument. Now, this context object basically keeps track of where in the widget tree that we are. So we're passing this current context, which describes where in the tree this currently is into these functions. And you're going to see this quite a lot in Flutter, just so that widgets know where they are in the tree in the whole grand scheme of things. So anyway, this function right here, it returns a widget that we want to load up when we go to this base route, when we first open the app. Now, I want to load up the loading widget. Now, you might be thinking I've gone crazy because I've said over here that the home screen should be the home widget. And right here, I'm saying, well, the first screen that loads up should be the loading widget. Now, ultimately, when we finish the app, this will be correct, this loading screen, because when we first open the app, we have to load the data first of all. So we're going to show that loading screen. I'm just specifying this for now so that we can test this out easily, the home page. OK, so we're going to change this in a minute. Anyway. That's the first route. The second one is going to be forward slash home, and that is going to load up the home screen. So we'll say function, take the context object, and then return 
the home widget. Okay, and then finally, we need a screen for this choose location right here. I'm gonna call this forward slash location, and then this will be a function that takes in the context object, and we return the choose location widget. Okay, now currently we have errors on this and this, and that's because we need to import them at the top. So I'm gonna copy this dude where we import home and paste it twice. I'll change this one to loading, and I'm gonna change this one to choose underscore location. So now we've imported all three files and we can use these things. Okay then, so at the minute, if we tried to run this, then we're gonna get some kind of error because this right here is conflicting with this. Right here, we're saying the home screen, the first screen should be the home widget. And right here, we're saying the default base route should be the loading widget. So they're conflicting with each other. And if I save this now and come to run and hot restart, then we're gonna see over here that we get an error. And that's because of these two things conflicting. So I'm gonna delete this right now and then save it. And then what I'm gonna do is come to run again and hot restart. And we should now see the loading screen behind there. Okay, so this is the first thing that's loading up. Now for testing purposes, I want this to be the first screen that loads up. So instead of using the home property right here to do that, because that conflicts, instead what I'm going to do is use a property called initial route. And right here we can say, which of these is gonna be the first route to load up when we open the app? By default, it's this one, but we can override that right here. So I'm gonna choose this home route to load up first of all. And if I save this now and then hot restart, then we should see the home screen now load up first. Later on when we're done, the initial route is gonna be this. But for now, while we're creating the home screen, we'll go with this one. So now we have all of our different routes set up. We now need a way for a user to navigate between these routes on the screen. So for example, we could have a button which when a user clicks it, pushes us to a different route. And that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go to the home screen, add a button inside this. So when we click on that, it pushes us to the choose location route. So let's now inside the safe area, remove the text as the child. And this time the child is going to be a column widget because ultimately on this page, we're gonna have a column of different widgets. So we need a children property, which is a list of widgets. And the first one and only one for now is going to be a flat button dot icon. Now inside here, we need a few different properties. First of all, we need the on pressed property, which is a function. And ultimately inside this function is where we're gonna be navigating them to a different screen. We'll come back to that in a second. For now, let's do the icon. And this is gonna be an icon widget. And the icon we're gonna use is on the icons object and it's called edit location, okay? Now we also need a label property, which is the text on this button. And that is gonna be a text widget, which will say edit location. All right, so if we preview this, it looks something like this on the screen, but at the minute, if we click on it, nothing happens. This is where we want to push to another route. And we do that inside this on pressed function. So in here, we can push to another route by saying navigator and then dot push named. So this is a function right here and it's named because we're gonna supply a named route. We're gonna use the name of one of the routes to push to that route. And then it's called push because essentially what we do is push another screen on top of this screen. This screen is still gonna exist underneath. It's just that we're pushing another one on top of it. So this function takes two arguments. The first one is the context object. The second one is the named route. And we wanna to go to location. Okay, so now if I save this and click on this, it's gonna push the location screen on top. Now the home screen is still sitting underneath and we need a way to get back to that home screen once we've come to this page. So let's go to the choose location and do this. So now inside the scaffold, all I want to do is add, first of all, a background color, and that is gonna be colors.gray, and it's gonna be 200. And then I also want to add in an app bar, which is gonna be an app bar widget. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because in Flutter, when we have an app bar, 
automatically it places a little back arrow inside the app bar when we've come from a different screen and we're going to see that in a second so inside this app bar first of all i want to give this a background color which is going to be colors dot blue and then 900 so quite a deep blue and then we need a title which is going to be a text widget and that is going to say choose a location and then we also want a center title property and that is going to be set to true to put the title in the middle and then finally elevation i'm going to take the elevation away remove the drop shadow by saying zero and that makes it flat on the page so if i save this now we can see this thing this arrow automatically appears to take us back to the home page so when we click on this it pushes the new screen on top of the old screen but the home screen is still there underneath this and then when we click this arrow it pops this screen back off and shows what's underneath it again which is the home screen so this all works now and this is how we can transition between routes or screens okay so i'd like to talk about one more thing before we finish up with this video and that is this whole concept of pushing and popping routes or screens because it's a really important one to understand especially when you start to make apps with multiple different routes so you can think of our app is like a stack of screens that show and initially we just have one screen that shows the initial route when the app first opens up then when we use that method to push on a new route what we did is push on a new screen on top of the old screen and the old screen still sits here underneath now in the app bar we had that back button and when we press that what happens is it pops this route back off the stack so we're left with the old route underneath which we then see again so this is all okay but imagine if we're going from one route to another and we're using that method to push new routes on all the time eventually we're going to end up with a tall stack of routes sitting on top of each other and this can become quite tricky at one point to manage your routes when you have all of these different routes on the stack because imagine we want to go back to the home page then it probably wouldn't be a good idea just to push on the home page again because we already have that home screen sitting at the bottom so it is an important concept to understand and we are going to be doing more routing as we go through the rest of this course so that we can see different ways to push and pop routes on and off this kind of stack and manage our routes in an efficient way so i just wanted you to understand this concept of pushing routes and popping routes on and off the stack